Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISC podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. Uh, Andrew has a couple questions, but I can't ask you all of them. But one of them, he's asking, asking you, is that Euro is part of a process of political integration by chattering class that urges and stands to benefit from political integration. I think you actually mentioned that uh, politics has a, a huge to, uh, effect on the currency. you want to share some uh, what, insight in that? Sure. You know, I think he's right. The political classes which control and dominate you know, a lot of the propaganda in the media. I mean, you're even seeing the apathy across the entire Eurozone uh, when you read the you read the numbers of the voters that are, you know, showing up to vote on this, you know, the European treaty and things like that. Uh, they're declining dramatically because people are losing faith and they're, and they're realizing that giving up their sovereignty uh, to the chattering classes in Brussels is really not the way to go. Um, so that's uh, exactly part of the problem. Uh, the the social unrest you're seeing is starting to be directed outward towards Brussels and and towards uh, the whole Eurozone idea in and of itself um, now that things are on the down cycle. And with rising unemployment, as I said, um, that is going to force pressure <clears throat> on the unions. If these countries have to, have to be forced to cut rates, I saw one, the, one of the questions was uh, with the labor, minimum labor contracts, how do they go about doing that? That's exactly the problem, the straitjacket the countries are in. They're going to have to break some of these um, in order to survive fiscally in here. Um, and <clears throat> you, we know the power of the unions across most of Europe. Uh, that, that creates another huge political problem for, for them um, added to the financial woes. So all this, we think, is coming together. And in a world in which global demand, if global demand does not rebound, as we said, these problems will continue to get worse. And there's no, there's, uh, from a, on the horizon standpoint, there's no white knight to ride in here and provide the funding uh, to paper over these exposures, so then you'd have a social, <clears throat> a social explosion uh, on top of a major financial uh, uh, problem and <laughs> a potential daisy chain of defaults. Now these are nasty scenarios, but the point I'm trying to make is, here is these are logical probabilities if you, uh, you know that you can start to see playing out because of the exposure and because of the action of the people themselves across the eurozone. Um, I'm a little long-winded, but you know, we, you know, this this is one of those setups that we think again from a risk-reward standpoint. Um, if you're wrong, uh, you're wrong, and you know where to get out. Uh, but if you're right, uh, you don't know how right you're going to be, and you can be very, very right. That's a great trade to us. That to us sets up a very good trade, and using the long-term options on uh, the ISE um, to us is it's just a perfect scenario for that use of them. Right, and I didn't even go through, you know, obviously 81 is not the top for, you know, some people say parity, and you even mentioned that, and of course, maybe not in the next six months, but 81 is not the top, and people need to realize that in options, that um, probably if we thought 81 was the top, nobody would, you know, no investor would want to pay 69 cents for an option that would only be worth a dollar. The reason it's trading at 69 cents is there is some potential for it to go to 84 or 85 or 86 sometime in this, you know, next six months. Uh, question is from another one from Andrew. He has some great questions. The liabilities of the, uh, the pigs, uh, the credit that was extended, was it mostly German? Uh, I think it was a combination. There were a lot of German bank banking. I don't know the the breakdown in terms of the individual countries' banks. Um, I have some of the breakdowns on the, you know, the the exposure to the Euro, to the Central and Eastern Europe. Uh, the Austrian banks uh, have been the most exposed there. Um, you know, Greece, uh, Swedish banks, very exposed to Eastern Europe. I don't know the the, the percentage breakout uh, of the of the pig uh, lending. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, question is about positions. So, considering all the problems, how can an investor make money? I think Jack just went through that. In which positions would you recommend? Right, Jack? You're just saying buy a call. I mean, you know, look at a certain strike price, decide what kind of risk you're willing to 
take on, but again, you can only lose what you're paying, and that's the big benefit of buying an option, correct? That's exactly right. And again, don't, don't make a big bet. Make a small bet. Give yourself time. Buy something out September, December. You can even go to March. Is that correct, Steve, on the current? You can go out to March, absolutely. March. You know, make a small bet, and you give yourself time to let this stuff chin <laughs> to find out if global demand does not return. And as you start to be right, you can always add the position and increase the position. But even if you make a small bet and this, in, in this disaster scenario plays out, uh, you can bet that small bet um, is going to pay off very, very well. Um, but as I said, give yourself time, and if it starts to play out, you can always add to the position. That's the way we're looking at it. Very, very interesting. Jack, what about the smaller currencies? Do you follow the question here from somebody that has a great ISE max, ISE good, so I appreciate that. Um, but uh, the attendee says um, he's looking to have uh, an opinion on the smaller currencies, the Eastern. Which ones do you actually... Uh, follow. We follow because they're tradable in the spot market. We follow the Hungarian forint, uh, the Czech Karuna, uh, and also the Pol Polish Lati is what we follow uh, in Eastern, you know, Central Europe. Excuse me. So if they're uh, interested, they should sign up for your paid service, correct? Yeah, we follow those, and actually, we, we we put out a emerging market, a separate emerging market weekly commentary every Monday, um, and we actually put trades in, you know, throughout the week if we have an emerging market trade set up. Um, so we do follow those currencies. They're very volatile. Uh, they're <laughs> very illiquid. They're high spreads, so you need to trade them always with caution. Uh, trade them with a much lower position than you normally trade. A trade, you know, smaller number. Um, and trend, trend trade them. They'll try and short-term trade those guys. Uh, but if you do that right and understand your risk, uh, uh, they move about twice as fast uh, as the regular major market currencies. Um, for example, uh, uh, something like a uh, <clears throat> Czech Corona probably moved up 250% in the bull market move against the U.S. dollar, while the euro went up 100%. Um, they, also, they also go down two and a half times faster, so keep that in mind. So if you get it right, you're going to get it right very, very fast. You don't, again, have to have a huge position in them to make money if you get the trend right. That's interesting. Terry has a question about the BRIC countries and wanting a new world currency. We talked about this uh, on our last webinar, but um, what do you think? I know there's been a lot of talk of this new currency, uh, something out there that would replace the dollar. Um, what do you think? Well, the, yeah, the dollar right now is held in about 70 percent um, uh, distribution uh, across the global central banks. Um, and actually, the penetration of the dollar, because of all the dollar-based credit being pumped out there, uh, the volume penetration of the dollar actually increased during the bear market, seven-year bear market, which was unusual, which just goes to the incredible demand for dollar-based credit. Um, again, there's no other challenger there that makes sense to the dollar in terms of replacing it as a reserve currency. Uh, we don't think the powers that be would ever think the euro, given the exposure in the banking system back there, um, would see it uh, as a potential um, alternative uh, to the dollar. Uh, countries like China that everybody has marked up as, as you know, kind of taking over hegemony, um, uh, they're not sophisticated enough yet uh, to do it, and they're many, many years away. Um, so we just don't see an alternative here. And the reality is, when you think about it, the dollar has served the global financial system very, very well. We wrote a piece uh, recently talking about everybody has this love for gold and this love for the gold standard, uh, but the reality is the reality of the gold standard when it was in use didn't meet uh, uh, the religious zeal that people have for it. There are major problems with the gold standard. Um, there was major cheating on the gold standard when it was in place, um, and some people believe it led to a lot of the conflicts of uh, World War II because of the cheating going on in the global financial system because of the gold standard. That gets into a whole other story. But the major trading partners back then were France, uh, Germany, and England. Um, and the, you know, Germany and, and France would constantly cheat when uh, England, in terms of the gold standard, uh, using their colonies to a lot, do a lot of manipulation. But needless to say, it, it, ha it created a lot of contention in the global financial system and wasn't a secure vehicle. Um, so we had World War I, World War II, and then we had the Bretton Woods system, which was a dollar-based system. People pegged to the dollar. There was some gold backing, needless to say, but it was a dollar-based system. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, 
please visit www.isc.com slash podcast.